We are The God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination, nor organization, nor YouTube channel, nor other Facebook whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. About three years ago, we posited a theory which has become much stronger since, and no one has disproven it at all. Where we locate the rivers from Eden on the bottom of the ocean floor, which is really the most logical, considering there was a worldwide flood. Someone claims to have disproven it, but did they? Well, we'll let you be the judge of that. You can discern and know for yourself. In the last video, we proved that the word Nahar is river or stream and never fountain or spring. There are two other Hebrew words for those concepts, not Nahar, in which they are never associated whatsoever. And when you look at the scripture in Genesis 2, you have the river Nahar from Eden. It's a river, a stream. The Pisan River, Nahar. The Gihon River, Nahar. The Hittikel River, Nahar. Not Tigris. The Euphrates River, not the modern Euphrates. No way that fits because, again, there was no rainfall during that time. Therefore, no Euphrates because the Euphrates is fed by two rivers that come from the mountains from rain and snow. No rain, no snow, no precipitation, no Euphrates, and no Tigris. They would not exist. And it is also known as Nahar River. These are five rivers, nothing else. But the Gihon River of Genesis 2 must surround the whole land of Ethiopia. Sounds easy enough, but first... We must define Ethiopia in ancient times, which we'll do in the next video in great detail with maps and history to show you, because it is far larger than modern Ethiopia, which is ancient Abyssinia by name, not Ethiopia. It's a small sliver of Ethiopia, though part of Cush's, Ethiopia's territory, indeed, in Africa. Ethiopia cannot leave Africa. That's Ham's territory. The Mideast is not. By the end of this video, you will firmly know where the Gihon River, Nahar, must be, and it leaves no room, really, for speculation at all. No matter how much twisting is done, see what you think. So is modern Ethiopia the same as it was back in the days of Cush, son of Ham? That's the question. But you know, it's really no mystery. Yes, colonialists have done quite a job of messing up history, but this is extremely well recorded. Too much so to really mess this up. Well, unless you go and just look at one Wikipedia reference and you leave it at that and you start with 8 BC when you really should be starting with what? 3500 BC? Yeah, that's not even close. That'll lead to a wrong conclusion most of the time, certainly. Modern Ethiopia is not the Ethiopia of the Bible. It is only a small, very small portion of it, we'll show you. Now, Cush lived just after the flood, son of Ham, grandson of Noah. So very ancient. Moses wrote Genesis, Genesis 2, in about 1700 B.C. or so. And yes, the Torah says Moses wrote it, so no one else could have, or it's wrong. And it is not wrong. Those scholars playing that game do not believe the Bible. Don't fall for that. They say, how could he write that he died, for instance? But duh, he knew he was dying. Additionally, it would be appropriate, even for Joshua, his predecessor, to go in and just finish the book with the last sentence at the end to that tune. 
There are scholars who actually get hung up on that, though. But again, it's because they don't believe the Bible that they would even think in such a direction. So if you were another, I don't know, uh, YouTube channel, let's say, where would you go in history to determine the territory of ancient Ethiopia? Well, Wikipedia? Maybe? Only? That would be crazy, right? Yeah, but another YouTube channel does that. They go to a reference there, they find an 8 BC. I know we mentioned 9 BC in the last video. It's 8. Good enough. Close enough. Now, this is Wikipedia that they quote about the Kushite kingdom that started in 8 BC and actually didn't last that long. As if 8 BC is the origin of of the lands of Cush, or Ethiopia, his lands, which are far more ancient than that. That's not even appropriate history to bring up in this context. See, the problem is, though, yes, that was the kingdom of Cushites. Appropriately, by the way, as Abyssinia is most certainly a Cushite territory of Ethiopia. But it is not representative of all of Ethiopia. It's only a small piece of it. History doesn't leave this to debate. Let's look at actual maps that prove this overwhelmingly and indisputably. In 450 BC, yeah, 450, not 8, Herodotus describes the world as he knew it. And this map represents that. Where does he place Ethiopia in his time? You know, the time of Esdras, Ezra. Over 400 years before the Cushite kingdom mentioned from the Wikipedia reference in 8 BC. From, what's this, east coast all the way to the west coast. All of central Africa. All of it. The colonialists come in later, and yeah, they divide it up and really mess up the whole paradigm. There's no doubt about that. You will find this paradigm, however, of Herodotus, still surviving through all of that, pretty much, all the way until the 1800s, consistently. Now, here's what's really odd, though. What does he call the sea on the west coast of Africa? We know it as the Atlantic Ocean, or the South Atlantic today, right? Well, it's called the Ethiopian Ocean. Odd. How would it get called after Ethiopia? If it's only a little country where Abyssinia is. On the other coast of Africa, all the way on the east coast, it would be nonsense. So the answer is it wouldn't. The reason is because Ethiopia, just as this map reflects, and we're going to show you a lot that do, is coast to coast, all of Africa, from east to west coast, the entire width of Central Africa. Could that just be a mistake? Oh, no. In 43 AD, and some of you will probably recognize this map, because in our Solomon's Gold series, this is one of the ways, one of very, very many, in which we locate ancient Ophir, which is known as the Isle of Christ, to the Greeks. It was the Greeks' source of gold, and they mapped their route, telling us exactly where they want. Where was this island? Well, it's east of China. Right there, the Isle of Gold, the Isle of Silver, just next to each other. One is Luzon, Philippines, the other is Mindanao, Philippines. It's right there. And it's been right there, mapped for thousands of years, yet somehow the world forgot where Ophir was. See, that's what we're dealing with here. This whole mindset is erroneous from the beginning, especially regarding the rivers from Eden. And we've crushed this paradigm. I mean, crushed it. And I know there's a lot that don't like that. And that's okay. They don't have to. But what they have to do is they have to prove it wrong. And no one has nor will they. This is far too solid. Now, just after the Kushite kingdom in Abyssinia, Pomponius Mila 
draws this Greek map of the world, again, especially to the Isle of Christ and Argyre, the Isles of Gold and Silver, shown right there on the map where the Philippines is today. And he draws out Ethiopia on the east coast of Africa. See that? Yes. But then he shows another Ethiopia territory because Ethiopia was much larger, crossing all of Central Africa to the west coast as well. And what's that to the south, you say? In the ocean? Oh, it's called the Ethiopian Sea, even. Ethiopia was far more than a little landlocked nation in history. Even in the time of the Kushite kingdom, this proves. So that reference, completely impertinent. The fact is, is ancient Ethiopia is literally most of the continent of Africa. In 1467, 150 years before the King James translators translate the Hebrew word Cush as Ethiopia. This was the, no, the known world, which is the same as 450 BC in regards to Ethiopia and the same as 43 AD. It really didn't change. Though divided into sub-Egypt, media middle Ethiopia, and interior Ethiopia, all still Ethiopia. It covers the whole of Central Africa from coast to coast, not little old Abyssinia. 1554, 50 years before the King James was released, Ethiopia was Central Africa, with Moreau, you know, the capital of Abyssinia, clearly separated out here. Now, still part of Ethiopia, but very small part. This Ethiopia, however, is not the name of one nation, but a reference to the whole of Central Africa still, as you'll see. Fast forward to 1710. South Atlantic Ocean is still called the Ethiopian Sea. How could that be? And Ethiopia, still essentially coast to coast. But the slave coast has been parceled out by colonialists as Guinea at this point. Not an African name, certainly. And then there's Negro land above it, which is Ethiopia, but they've now carved it out. Now notice, though, Abyssinia, which again, still part of Ethiopia, but a very small part. Right there. And why is Central Africa still known is Ethiopia. The map says this country is wholly unknown to Europeans at that time. So in other words, especially with the slave trade, they hadn't gotten there yet. And I mean yet. This map in 1737, though, continues the more ancient traditional names of these territories, though not Guinea, already carved out there as well. Ethiopia inferior was shown on the previous map as Negro land, it's still Ethiopia. And let's see, Guinea had expanded even further to the south on the west coast. You can see that there. Uh, that was Ethiopia on the last map. Now it's not. But Ethiopia superior, still there. Then there's Abyssinia, separated yet again. It did have its own kingdom, but was never representative of the whole of Ethiopia, thus would never fit the Gihan River. And still in 1743, after the KJV, Ethiopia is Central Africa, from coast to coast essentially, with the South Atlantic still called the Ethiopian Sea. See, they are carving out Guinea still, which is really part of Ethiopia. But at this point, they had targeted slavery there for over a century at least. That is what is known as the Slave Coast, Guinea. And another YouTube channel makes the claim that lost tribes of Israel went into slavery 
as in the African slave trade. Now, actually, we proved that long before they existed, but that's okay. It is true to say that. But see, here's the problem. They ignore that if Ethiopia is only Abyssinia, or modern Ethiopia as we call it, well, that Ethiopia, Abyssinia, was never colonized and was not a slave state. Oops. Thus, if that is the only part of Ethiopia, then the lost tribes of Israel who migrated there were never taken into slavery. Uh, so they disagree with themselves yet again because they are not aware of history, nor are they literate when it comes to biblical interpretation. And so their science way, way off, especially on this topic, really not a topic they should even be considering to cover. The KJV was never referring to Abyssinia, nor were the prophets. They were referring to all of Central Africa from coast to coast. Oh yeah, and by the way, for those wanting to say, oh, the European this and that, whatever, Moses was an African. He was not black, perhaps, but nevertheless, he was born and raised in Egypt in Africa. So remember that. He's the one that wrote Genesis. An African wrote Genesis. <laughs> and he knew exactly what he was talking about because he well knew what Ethiopia was, especially since he was a learned uh, person who lived within the royalty of the land at the time, at least initially. Now, in 1766, there's Ethiopia still stretching across Africa and Abyssinia, modern Ethiopia. But Abyssinia is separated. This is just before Jacinius wrote his Hebrew Chaldean lexicon, and Ethiopia is still far larger than just Abyssinia. Really not a mystery, folks. Five years later, 1771, Lower Ethiopia on the west coast, Upper Ethiopia stretching across to the east, and Abyssinia still called out separate, though still Ethiopia. No more Ethiopian sea, though, on this map, but it most certainly was documented up until this point for thousands of years, as we've shown you and proven, all the way back in antiquity, as far as maps go. 1852, still Plateau Ethiopian, stretching across the central portion, and look, there's Abyssinia, called out separate. Forty years after Jacinius, and still Ethiopia is far larger than just Abyssinia, which is called out separately. Finally, 1860. Now at this point, the name Ethiopia disappears from this map completely. I don't see it. But Abyssinia, still there, not called Ethiopia, by the way. And soon after that, Abyssinia would take the name Ethiopia in time, which again is still very appropriate, as it certainly was always part of Cush's territory. But what it never was, was all of it in history. Now, with this perspective, we are ready to find the Gihon River. It's actually fairly simple now. No scholar nor other YouTube channel, will ever find it if they don't even know where ancient Ethiopia was. If Ethiopia was from the west coast to the east coast of Africa, where must the Gihon River be in order to surround it? This is easy, folks. It has to be on the bottom of the ocean floor, and nowhere else could possibly fit. And since the Bible is even more specific, if Ethiopia is that large in scope, covering much of the entire continent of Africa, when the Bible was written, then where must that river 
surround to encompass the whole land of Ethiopia? Well, it's coast to coast. It would take a river that goes around the whole continent. How do you surround a continent with a river? Well, it has to be on the bottom of the ocean floor surrounding it, and we find trenches right there that fit the Gihon River perfectly. The Gihon River on the bottom of the ocean floor matches the ancient oceanic trench system, which, yes, portions of it have been filled in due to being next to continental shelves, which have rivers dumping sediment into them constantly and for thousands of years at this point today. But once this was the Gihon River of Genesis 2, which connected to the mid-ocean ridge or river from Eden, which is much larger as it would have to be to feed four other rivers. Nothing else fits, and this is an exact match as all five rivers fit this system, the mid-ocean ridge and the oceanic trench system. Now, some may try to say, well, a ridge isn't Nahar. Yeah, well, who called it a ridge? <laughs> Science calls it a ridge. Well, why did they do that? Well, they call it a mountain range. However, would you define a river which flows downhill for 65,000 miles as mountains that are next to it? Especially when those mountains aren't even as tall as that river is deep and wide? you got to be kidding. That is a phony name. They just don't know what they're looking at. It is a river. It is the river from Eden. It is Nahar. It flows downhill for 65,000 kilometers. This is no joke. And then the trenches, same thing. The deepest trenches are at the very end of the whole system. On all of Earth, it fits perfectly. Exact match. Now, we drew out the shape in green of ancient Ethiopia, according to the maps we showed you pretty well. And you can see to surround this whole land of Ethiopia, essentially, this Gihon River has to be on the ocean floor. There's no other way. The Gihon Spring, also appropriately named, though not the Gihon River, Nahar, is right next to this river, as springs are many times. No, this river cannot flow into it because it's a freshwater spring, and the Gihon is salty. Trying to connect the Gihon spring and geysers in Ethiopia <laughs> that don't even have the name Gihon in absolute horrible, faulty nonsense. No way. You'd have to cross underneath the Red Sea, underneath the Red Sea Trench in order to get there somehow, and that doesn't happen. It just doesn't work no matter how you put it. That's nonsense. And it takes Pangaea to try to make it work, <laughs> which, by the way, if you search on Wikipedia, go and search for Pangaea, and it comes up Pangaea, that is the original name of this so-called theory of nonsense. It's the satyr Nephilim giant god named Pan and his evil harlot wife or really consort Gaia. Yes, they call her Mother Earth, but not for what you think, but because she mothered the Nephilim with the satyr god Pan. Very nice. So we'll call it what it is. The Nephilim theory that they're propagating on that channel is nonsense of one continent which separated, which has never, ever been proven, and by the way, according to the theory, happened millions of years before the flood. So doesn't work. 
You can't just do that. Just take this here, take that there, pull out a word here in Scripture, pull out another word, just take the definition, totally misinterpret it. This is all just mumbo-jumbo, and we're seeing that from this other channel all the time. Regardless, even with that, the Gihon Springs terminates over 340 kilometers from the Red Sea alone and much further. To get to Ethiopia. You can't just draw a line in between and say, oh, see, they were connected. <laughs> Not when you have the Red Sea Trench there, which is actually the Gihon River, as it flows one way, and that would require the river to flow in two directions and uphill, actually in both. <laughs> Not scientific, not logical, not biblical, and frankly, not even a theory, but nonsense. Now, in our next video on the Gihon River, we will prove to you from the Book of Jubilees that it actually completely defines the Gihon River as most certainly not in Africa. Ooh, really? No. It shows it surrounding Africa as a border between Shem and Ham, which is well documented in many ways. Shem's territory ends at that border and does not go into Africa, which means the Gihon River is not in Africa, but surrounds it. And from multiple directions, this will be confirmed. You'll see. It does not say the Garden of Eden is even near the Gihon, yet the other channel claimed that, which is illiterate reading, especially since it is the Book of Jubilees which fully locates the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, in Shem's territory, on his eastern border, nowhere near Africa. Africa is Ham's, not Shem's. These guys need to learn biblical geography, and they have so far to go. We'll also deal with Hindu Kush as well. Watch this, and you will fully know the Gihon River is on the bottom of the ocean floor, right where we find it to be. Thank you for watching our flood series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Also, double check, you are not unsubscribed somehow. As several have told us, they have been or have not been receiving notifications. You can support us on Patreon if you feel led as well. Many had asked, so we set it up that way to accommodate and... Because of our Patreon supporters especially, we have been able to offer many conferences in the Philippines, and we continue with some great ones coming up, which you can get updates on our website, thegodculture.com, and register there as well. Don't forget to do that. Also, don't forget to like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture, space, hyphen, space, original, as we update Different things there as well. One final note. YouTube and Facebook seem to wish to play games with our sites. Many have said they are not being notified or cannot view some posts on Facebook or even have been encouraged by Facebook to unlike us. <laughs> nice. Therefore, we are compiling an email list in which we have already begun sending notifications ourselves just in case those systems fail, and we already have thousands. Add your name to that list now. Email us at thegodculture at gmail.com. Thank you for all your support in every way. And don't worry, none of the so-called giants are big enough to stop this momentum. Yahuwah bless all.